Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be potting up some pine seedlings that I grew from seed. This summer will be the third growing season for these pines and I believe these are sugar pines. I start a lot of my bonsai from seeds and these seedlings are kind of at a critical stage. If I let them grow in this seed tray container for this year, the roots will be too constricted and I think the health of the tree will start to go downhill. And they may even die this year if I don't repot them. So I've got to get them out of these little tiny seed tray pots into larger training pots, get the roots pruned and get them growing for this season. Before I start today's work, let's go down into the basement. I've got some seedlings, some Pyrenean oak seedlings that Dave from Blue Sky Bonsai sent to me. I think it's time to bring them up out of the basement, out of their cold kind of winter quarters, and bring them out into the greenhouse here and get them growing. Here's a look at the weather today. Blue skies. Ah, oh, it's nice. Warming up. There's still a bit of snow on the ground, but it's disappearing fast. Here's some of the snow here. All right, down into the basement we go. So here we are, I've got a lot of trees, plants still down here. So here's the oaks. These are Pyrenean oaks. I've got one, two, three, four. And then I've got, I forget the name of them. They're like a holly oak. Maybe uh, Holmes Oak, I'm thinking. One looks really good. The other doesn't look so good. And it, it didn't have very good root system on it. But the other one's doing really well. So I got one out of those. So I'm going to bring them up into the greenhouse. I think it's time. You can see the buds are swelling on them. I think it's time they got some decent light, some warmer temperatures, and get them growing. Most of the trees in the basement did really well over the winter. There's a few that didn't, and that's my Dracaenas. I cut them back, and then I put them down in the basement, and they don't look so good. I, I think they may have died. We did get some cold weather down here this year. There's my other Dracaena. It's still firm down at the base, so I'm hoping once it warms up, it'll sprout. We'll see. Uh, the jades did fantastic in the cold. They even grow which is amazing at like, you know, 10 degrees Celsius or below, they're still growing, which is just amazing. The rosemary overwintered nicely in the basement here. The asparagus fern did quite well. Uh, my cold hardy figs, my edible ficus, ficus carica, did really well. You can see the green growing tip waiting for warmer weather. My fern and my grasses for my accent plants are looking good. My aloe in the Mars project back there is looking good. And you can see on the Mars soil that it's actually starting to grow green algae on it or moss or something. So that's good. That's good news that the soil is, you know, becoming a nice place to grow things. My orange tree here is doing really well. Here's one that I lost and I'm not sad I lost it. This is my pencil cactus. Uh, I cut it back hard. And when I brought it down into the basement here, it just, I, I think it got too cold for it and it just died. So I'm not sad to see that go because I never liked the plant anyway. My aloe here that I cut back, the uh, one with the sort of uh, variegated striping on it, tiger, tiger aloe, I think they're called. Uh, it's doing really well. My grapefruit tree back there is looking good. My climbing aloes here doing fantastic. All the jades, uh, this is the winter jade. Uh, these are cuttings off the old winter jade. My mimosa here, it's just starting to break dormancy, so I could bring this one up too. I think it wants to grow. And my ponytail palm in there, it, it's doing really well. It overwintered nicely at these temperatures. I've got a couple of succulents down there from Isabella that are doing well. And then over here, I've got, I've got my um, pomelo seedlings, they're doing well. My lemon tree, my semi-cascade lemon tree, my bigger lemon tree. This one's not doing really well. It, this is the one that fell out of the pot. And 
I think it's still alive and doing well. I've just got to repot it, get it into some uh, better soil. I think it'll be all right. All right, I'll bring the oaks up into the greenhouse and give them some sunshine. I have got all the oaks up here, all in this back corner. They're all well watered. So hopefully, you know, in the next couple of weeks, we'll see some leaves coming out on them. That'll be exciting. It's a really cool species of oak. The leaf size is kind of like the English oak, a very small oak leaf, but it's a little more feathery looking, kind of exotic, at least for Canada. So it's nice to have some European trees here in the greenhouse. I also brought up my edible figs here, my ficus carica. They don't take up a lot of space and I thought might as well get those growing too. I still have the uh, fig that I got when we did a club tour of some of the local greenhouses. I got this fig here, so that will need repotting. See what it's like and cut it back in size. And my goal is to get this going as a bonsai and I'm hoping that Whatever I cut off the top here, I can plant as a cutting and get, you know, more edible figs on the go. I'm going to begin the repotting today by repotting this Douglas fir. This is a tree that Leszek brought down with him last time he visited. So it's in, uh, I think, the original soil that it was collected in. And I think it's time to sort out the roots, get it in good bonsai soil and pot it up in a larger pot. I'll move the seed tray aside and we'll work on that after the Douglas fir. So this is the pot I picked out for the Douglas fir. It's quite a bit larger, but I think it'll really help the tree grow. I want to grow this one as sort of a specimen, a single Douglas fir all by itself, not in a forest. I've got the new pot all cleaned up, ready for potting. So let's get the Douglas fir out of the pot here and see what the root system's like. So there it is. So this is just the mountain soil it was collected in. You can see there's some fungus in here, probably mycorrhiza. I'm going to begin the work now, combing out the roots. There's some sphagnum moss on top here, an extra twist to the trunk there. And we'll see what kind of root system this tree has. The tree stayed nice and green all winter, so it's still doing well health-wise. So you can see the white mycorrhiza in the soil there. Now, even if I wash the roots, it won't wash it totally away. If you imagine, you know, watering your tree, the mycorrhiza doesn't wash away every time you water your tree. So it's, you know, it's attached to the tree and it'll regrow. And if you, you know, really want to be sure, you can put a bit of the old soil in with the new soil to kind of uh, colonize the mycorrhiza into your new soil if you want. Okay, it's got a really good root system. Nice, compact and fibrous. Excellent. So I'm going to wash the roots now. All right, I'll bring my root rake with me because I'm sure I'll have to kind of get the soil out of the root system. A very clayish type of soil from the mountains of Alberta. Really good root system on it. And you can see the root system isn't active yet. There's no white growing tips, so great time to repot it just before the tree is becoming active. And you can see the tree was in the pot up to here. So I've got a little bit of extra trunk, which is kind of nice because it, you know, makes a little more movement down here and a little taller tree, which I like tall trees. Okay, well that soil is removed from the root system. You can see the mycorrhiza is still attached to the roots. There's white stuff all over the roots. Oh, there's a root tip here that's active. I'll show you that. If you can see that. Just here, you can see the roots are just starting to get active. There's some white tips on them. So that's pretty exciting. I hope I've got that in the camera. Right there. Yeah, you can see the little white tips just starting on the root tips. Very cool. Perfect time to repot the tree. 
All right, I'll begin the root work. So I'm going to start by removing this root that's really high. My root base will be down at this level, not way up here. So that's coming off. And this one too, it's a little high. That gets us down to here where I've got a lot of roots coming from this level, but they're not really, you know, radial. They're kind of going down into the soil. I've got a few nice kind of radial ones around here. So I think those will be the ones that will eventually make my root base. This one, ah, that one's okay. Yeah, I will take this one off. It's kind of sticking up. Better ones down below. This one comes out radial here. This one's cranked over this way, so I'll get rid of that. This one is radial here. This one's starting to come over, so I'm going to prune that part of it off. Like that. Not much on this side, but that's fine. Something will grow there in the future as the tree gains vigor. Okay, I, I don't think I'd want to do too much more than that. Maybe just this one sticking up. The root system is compact. There's not too much out of control. Maybe this one's sticking up here. Yeah, I think the rest are fine. Maybe this one could come off. Okay, so that's, that's it for the root work. Not much root work at all. Just some light trimming, getting the root base, the root plane established, and ready to pot it up. I'm cutting out the drainage screen for the pot, and you can see the pot has holes on the side here. So I'll have to make sure the drainage screen comes up from the bottom of the pot and comes up a bit to cover up these holes so all my soil doesn't come out. So I'll be leaving a little bit extra to kind of wrap it up. So maybe to kind of here. Okay, that should be good there. So let me get it in the bottom of the pot and see if that worked out okay. Oh yeah, that works out nicely. Okay, I'll get my base layer of soil in and I'll have to fill it up to about to just here and then put the tree on top. I'm putting my dust mask on when I'm pouring the soil so I don't have to breathe in all that dust which isn't good for your lungs. So here I go. All right, here I go with the soil. One scoop, two scoops, and that looks about right. All right, I'll get the tree planted now. So I'm going to put it, everything's looking pretty good with the roots. Put it on top of the soil here, twist it down a bit. I want to get my tree kind of balanced. So the, so right now you can see it wants to tip over this way. So I want to arrange it so it, it's fairly balanced and that'll give me a nice, a nice looking balanced bonsai in the future. So there, you can see the tree is balanced now. Well, it was. And that is, that is a good orientation for the tree. So I'll start adding soil around the roots now. Again, I'll be lifting the tree up as I add the soil to get those roots to, instead of being horizontal, that they kind of flow down into the soil nicely. And that's really important as the tree gets larger and larger. If your roots are too horizontal, you can't raise the tree up. If they're angled down into the soil, as the tree grows larger, you just kind of keep raising it up a bit each year to expose those roots. And it's always got those roots flowing down nicely into the soil. And yeah, you don't want the horizontal roots, otherwise you can't, you know, lift the tree out of the soil or the whole root system lifts out. So I'm just working the soil in now. Again, trying to keep the tree in a, a balanced orientation. So some more soil. I want to make sure the roots are, you know, nicely in the soil. I'm not worried about showing the root base at this time. I just want the tree to grow, be healthy, and then 
you know, you start worrying about styling the root base and the top of the tree later. So that, that is looking really good. I think that tree is planted nicely. It's nice and firm in the pot. Doesn't want to tip over. Let's water the tree. Here I go with the water. Give it a good thorough watering. Starting to come out the drainage holes now. Water it some more. Flush all that dust out of the soil. Give the top of the tree a misting. And that is good. I'll rotate the tree around so you can see it from all angles. So here I go. I have no idea where the front is. Maybe somewhere there is a nice front. I'll place a stone on the surface of the soil just to, you know, make sure the tree's not going to jump out of the pot or anything. Um, I'll put it right here. There, nice and secure. And I'll put it on the bench and hopefully in spring it'll start growing really nicely. I'll show you an update on some of the trees I've repotted recently. So here's the trident maple down here. You can see it's leafing out nicely and it's getting nice strong new growth now so you know even a tree with no roots will sometimes leaf out but to continue to grow means that the roots are working and you know it's probably survived the transplant uh, here's my zilkova my Japanese gray bark elm it's coming out nicely that was grown from seed by Michael in our club and then he gave me this little tiny seedling and I've been growing it ever since. The Royal Oaks buds are continuing to swell. Back here, the French Lilac, looking good. The Gardenia down here, the leaves are still green on it. That's a good sign, no new growth or anything. Oh, well, maybe there's a bud there. It's doing well so far anyway. It's not going downhill or anything. The Cherry Tree back here, the leaves are continuing to come out, so that's good. The field maple over here, the leaves are coming out nicely on that. The juniper still looks green and healthy. The mulberry, you can see the leaves coming on that. They're starting to push out nicely. Um, what else? The boxwoods, new growth on those. They're looking good. Um, I think, oh, the uh, Catoni Aster down there. You can see it down here. Looking really good. New shoots coming out all over it. So that's good. The lavender that Zinn gave me from last year is doing well. Yeah, everything's doing quite well in here. The Osage oranges, you can see all the new leaves coming out on those. Uh, over here. The purple smoke bush, still got leaves pushing out on that. My elm that I dug up from the backyard here, got buds swelling on that. Uh, my Virginia creeper, you can see all the red buds coming out on that. These mystery seeds that were in the purple smoke bush, tons of them still growing. My uh, red maples that I cut back a lot, have nice red maple leaves coming out on them looking really cool a lot of back budding on the trunks the whipcord cedar it's got new growth coming on the tips exciting my Norway maple um, if we look up here you can see the the uh, leaves are starting to come out on that looking good my bird's nest spruce the buds are really swelling on that They'll be popping out with new growth soon. 
so yeah exciting and then way down here I've got my nightshade bonsai so it's starting to really gain vigor you can see it there in the pot my sequoias they're still got their winter colors and I'm like that one the top of it died off but these ones are still flexible I'm hoping they turn green soon. I'm very worried about them. I mean, they still feel like they're active and healthy. They're just not green. Still got their winter color. So I'm hoping they turn green soon. My uh, Austrian pine here, I took a big chance on it last year. I really cut it back. Like it was so bushy that it looked, you couldn't even see the branches. So I really did a structural pruning on it. And, you know, I let it get bushy like that so it'd have all, all kinds of vigor. So when I did this structural pruning, I'd get a lot of back biting on the branches. And I think I'm getting that. If you look at the branches here, you can see all, all kinds of good buds forming all over the branches. So my hope is that when all this new foliage comes out in spring that it'll transform from this uh, kind of bare looking pine to something that's really tight and full. That's my hope. We'll see how it goes. I've got a couple of sacrifice leaders growing at the apex up here. Yeah, lots on the go with my Austrian pine. The black pine here, you can see how long the candles are getting already. There's my needles I wired up for my April Fool's joke. Don't wire the needles on your pines do not do that <laughs> my birch is really leafed out here it's looking very healthy it's kind of in a small pot and I was hoping to get it repotted this year but it leafed out really early so I may instead of putting it in a larger pot I may reduce the tree down in size you know cutting it in half taking away some of the vigor reducing it to a smaller tree for now I think that'll work quite nicely yeah, and the larch forest down here, looking really nice. Needles getting longer every day, looking good. My avatar grove here, it's just starting to grow. That'll be uh, coming out into leaf fairly soon. That's exciting. All right, it's time now to get my little pine seedlings root pruned and repotted for their very first time since they germinated from a seed. All right. So my first step is to get them out of the pot. <laughs> yeah. So let's go. I think it's easier if I just pull them out. I think. Okay. There we go. Lots of roots. Fine looking roots too. So these were germinated in bonsai soil. I'm just going to take some of it away. So they have a, a quite a nice flat root system. I'm going to throw those in the bucket of water. And I'll get the next one out over here. Pulling it up and out. And this one has a long root that goes into the next compartment. So there's that one. I'll get that in the water too. And here comes this little seedling. Oh, she come. There it goes. Get that in the water. And last of the pines is over here. I don't know what's growing beside it here. Could be a little willow seedling or something, but I'll just get rid of this moss and weeds here. Okay. So these seedlings, when you germinate them in uh, bonsai soil, you can see that right away you get a fine fibrous root system because, you know, the particles encourage subdivision and the roots kind of have to snake around all these particles. So you tend to get pretty good roots when you start a seedling in bonsai soil right away. All right, I'll get this in the water too. So the rest of this tray has a few stray... Now that's just a cutting that didn't root. And then there's a few, I think they're red maple seedlings or, I don't know, willows or something. So I'll put those 
back into the cold greenhouse. All right, let's see what I can do with the roots as far as combing them out. Rinsing them off, washing them. Wow. So there's the tap root. You can see it kind of winds around. All right, that little seedling has got the soil raked out and it's washed. It's ready for its root pruning, so I'll put it on the bench and start on the next tree. Here is a look at the first pine. You can see there's branches forming on the tree. The root system comes down. It must have hit the bottom of the pot and flattened out. So I've got, you know, a nice root spread. I am going to take the strongest root back. And I'm trying to determine where I think right here. So here I go, like that. Takes off a lot of the roots. And then I'm going to prune kind of all the other roots back, the long ones, the ones going downhill. Like that. And I can see on these roots, there's no new root activity. These were in the cold greenhouse, the poly house. So there's no active root growth yet. If they were in this greenhouse, they would have active roots, but so yeah, a beautiful, beautiful little tree. I imagine I'll remove this top eventually and grow the branches out here. But yeah, a great little tree. I'll keep that in water until we're ready to plant them all. All right, tree number two now. Similar thing, you know, a fairly flat root base, but there's this one thick tap root here that has to be reduced. And I'm thinking at least to here, like that. Take that off, prune these long ones back, this one back, that one back, this one back. And I think that's looking pretty good. I could, no, I'm gonna leave it there. I was gonna say I could prune this one back even further. Maybe I will. It was a little strong compared to the others, so that'll equalize the vigor. Okay, that one's ready to plant. Put it back in water. Here is tree number three. So this one doesn't have a tap root. The trunk just ends and there's a bunch of fine roots. So, I'm going to prune off this one here. This one here, there, get rid of all those roots. So now you see I've got a nice kind of fine fibrous root system. There's some pointing down. I'm going to prune those back, keep my root base a little flatter on the bottom and tapered nicely on the top. So just what you want in a bonsai root system. So that's looking good, ready for planting. The second last one now, so this one has a big tap root, comes out, curls around. You know, that could be a nice cascade tree if you made this the trunk, it's possible. I, uh, trying to see. I'm going to make it traditional. You can see all the branches developing up here, new shoots. I'm going to prune it off right here. Get rid of all those roots. Leave me with a kind of a small root system, but quite nice. Okay, that one's ready for planting. All right, one more seedling. You can see this one also ends here, the trunk, and then it divides into fine roots. So it's just a matter of kind of sorting them out and pruning them back to a reasonable length. So this one to here, here, and here. And that's a good, a good looking root system now. 
I think the root system on all these little pine seedlings is just awesome now. I'm really excited about getting them planted and growing them over the next summer. I think they have a lot of potential to grow into nice future bonsai. I've got all my pots washed and ready for planting. I've got like small, medium and large size pots. I have a feeling that these pines will all end up in a forest. I think that would be really nice to grow them together as a group planting someday. But for now, they'll be in individual pots and I'll slowly get them ready and then someday combine them all into a nice forest planting. I think that'll be really cool. So I'm going to match the trees. I think that's my largest tree will go in the largest pot. My medium sized tree will go in the medium pot, maybe even this one. The next size will go in this pot, this one in here, and the smallest one in the smallest pot. Perfect. Okay, let's get planting now. I've got my drainage screen in the bottom of the pot, so I'll get my dust mask on and start filling it with soil. So here I go. All right, I think that height is pretty good. In goes the tree, and in goes the soil. Lift the tree up a bit, more soil. Lift it up again, more soil. And that is planted. Okay, I'll get that watered now. All right, here I go with the water. The top of the tree a rinse too. And that is good. I'll get all the other seedlings potted up and then we'll come back and have a look at them all together. Here is a look at the five pines all potted up now. They're looking really good. I'm so glad to get that done. I hated seeing them suffering in that seed tray. So yeah, they'll, uh, I think they'll grow quite strongly this summer. My uh, black pine over here started out light the same way. And you can see how it's starting to get a thicker trunk and a lot of branches on it becoming more tree-like. So yeah, you've really uh, you got to take care of your seedlings. Otherwise, they just wither away and die and there was no point planting them in the first place. So that's what I did today. I took care of seedlings. I hope all the seedlings do well that I worked on today and you see them in future videos long into the future. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>